The first skill we're going to go back over in our review is distributing and simplifying. What does distributing mean? Or what do you usually draw on top of an equation when you're doing distribution? The little arrows. So let's start with that. So when we do distribution, the number in front of parentheses is going to be multiplied into that parentheses. So let's do that. Negative 4 times 2d is negative 8d. And negative 4 times positive 4 is negative 16. Anything else that we did not distribute, like that minus 6 at the end, just drops down. That's our next line of the equation. After this, we're going to continue simplifying by combining like terms. Combining like terms means literally just adding together the things that are alike or that have the same letter. In this case, the only things that are the same are my two constants, which are the plain numbers with no letter next to them. So we're just going to combine these two together. Negative 16 minus 6 is negative, 24, uh, negative 22. You bring down the negative 8d because we didn't combine it with anything. And that's it, folks. You have simplified the expression. Does that sound familiar to you? Yeah. Great. Can we try the next one? And by we, I mean you. <laughs> one thing I'm going to point out to you before you get started, since we're starting with distribution, what number am I distributing? What number is that in front of the parentheses? Negative three. Very good. That's what I wanted to hear. Okay, give it a shot. See if you can get it all the way down to the final answer um, by simplifying these terms. Okay, so the cobwebs, the cobwebs are real, I think. Here are some things that I heard that I liked that I kind of want to go over. Number one, the number that you are multiplying by or distributing is negative three because it's directly in front of the parentheses. It's very tempting to want to use this 5 first because it's the first thing you see. But remember, PEMDAS tells us that we have to multiply before we add. So we're doing the distribution before we add or subtract anything. That means after distribution, we would have 5 minus 18 plus 3x. Ooh, where'd the plus come from? Two negatives. A negative times a negative is a positive. So we can't forget that. That's a classic thing that, listen, cobwebs. It's been summer. Okay, now after this, when we want to combine like terms, the only things that are like are our constants. This time my constants were in front of the x, and that's okay. There's no rule that says x has to come first. We just normally do that. So let's just leave them in front, but let's actually subtract them. 5 minus 18 is negative 13. So we have negative 13 plus 3x as our final answer. If we didn't get that, which is fine, because again, the cobwebs in the brain, that's okay. Do we see things that can help us do it better next time? Okay, let's try it one more time. You guys have number three. What number am I starting with to distribute? Negative seven. All right, you got this one. Here you go. Okay, I'm hearing fabulous things. Thank you for talking about it. Sorry if I'm cutting you off, but I'm gonna go ahead and go through it. First thing we would do is, that's a highlighter, is I would distribute. This would become negative 21d plus 14 because of the negative negative thing. Then when I combine like terms, the like terms this time, again, are just the constants, meaning the numbers without letters. Won't always be that, but a lot of times it's the constants that you add together, which means this should be negative 21d plus 17. How did we do? Good. Good. Fabulous. Okay. We'll do number four together. So tell me what the first step is. What should I do? Distribute negative 4. Perfect. So we're going to take this negative 4 and we're going to multiply it into its parentheses, which means my next line should say, drop down negative 2, plus 8 minus 8x. Negative 4 times negative 2 is positive 8. Negative 4 times positive 2x is negative 8x. Now again, the two things I can combine together are my constants, negative 2 and 8. Negative 2 plus 8 is exactly like saying 8 minus 2. 8 minus 2 is 6, so this is 6, drop down negative 8x, and we have 6 minus 8x. Do we follow that one? Yes. Great, so combining like terms and simplifying is going to be a good step that gets us into solving. And remember, solving, we've been solving equations for a long time. It involves using inverse operations, which are all of the opposite operations from what you see. So what's the inverse of addition? What's the inverse of subtraction? What's the inverse of multiplication? Division, the opposite of division is? Here's a challenge question that we're not going to use today, but I want to see if you remember. Um, what is the inverse of squaring? 
Oh, I think I heard it. What'd you say? Root, square root. So eventually we'll get there. We're not doing that today, but I just want to toss that out there. Okay, great. But when we're trying to solve equations, this is the one where there's an equal sign and we're just trying to get X by itself, which means we need to kind of do like reverse inverse operations to get the X by itself. Right now there is a number in front of X. What is always that step to get rid of the number in front of X? What will I do? Bring it to the other side by doing what? The inverse operation. So right now, when you see 4x, it's really like saying 4 times x. When a number and a letter are smushed next to each other, we're meaning multiply. We're just too lazy to put the multiplication sign. Mathematicians are lazy. We made up a whole way to write things so we don't have to write words and symbols. So 4x means 4 times x, which means what's the opposite of 4 times x? Divide. So anytime we see a number in front of x, our last step that we're going to do is divide by that number. But you guys know the rule. What we do to one side, we have to do to the other. Negative 8 divided by 4 is, make a negative, but yeah, negative 2. Now, I know it's really tempting to want to always put the variable first. Do we realize that negative 2 equal to x is the exact same as saying x equal to negative 2? I do not care if you flip it to put the x first or you have the x second. That math sentence means the same thing. So if you're very particular and you like your x's to come first, great, do it, don't care. But if you just want to leave it in the order they gave to you, that's fine as well. Now if we make it a little bit more complicated than a one-step equation, we'll need to do two inverse operations to get that going. What's the inverse operation I'm going to need to use to get rid of this plus 3? Minus. Minus. So let's do that. Now what I do on one side, I have to do to the other. Can I subtract 23 and 3? Yeah. Like, do, is that, are those like terms that I can combine together? Perfect. Easy. So the positive 3 and negative 3 cancel each other out. That's why we do the inverse operation. And I'm left with 2x equal to 20. We just did this last step in the problem before this. We have a number in front of x. So what's the inverse? What do I do now? It does start with a d. Divide. We're going to divide just by whatever number is in front of the x variable to cancel it out. 2 over 2 is 1. That's why that works. This would be x equal to 10. Now that's a two-step equation. So we've seen a one-step equation. We've seen a two-step equation. Can we handle another two-step equation? Okay, by we I mean you. Can you handle this next two-step equation? I'll leave mine up on the board so you can see it while you work. What we would do with the algebra steps is to do inverse operations. Right now, I want this minus 4 to go away because I need to start figuring out what x is equal to. So we just move it to the other side by doing the opposite, which is adding. So we would get 2x equal to 14. After that, we're just trying to figure out what you have to multiply by 2 to get 14. To do that, if we don't have our times tables completely memorized, we divide by the number in front of the x so that x is by itself. 14 divided by 2 is 7. But what we've done is we've just figured out what number I could put right there and make this equation true. 2 times 7 is 14. 14 minus 4 is 10. That's what solving an equation is. You're just figuring out what number should go there to make it true. Can I give you a challenge? Yeah. Can we try the whole row, 8, 9, and 10? And we already, some of us already finished it. Amazing. Okay. 8, 9, 10. If you can keep going, keep going. See if you can do that. No, no, no. Try it. Try it. Try it. Just start the distribution. Oh, that's, I, I knew it, but I didn't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Try it. You got it. Um, for number 8, there's only one operation I need to do. What is that operation? Divide, Miss Quigley. You're right. Divide. Okay, so negative 48 divided by 8 is negative 6. I know I'm making you do arithmetic in your head, so that one might have been a little tough. And then I'm also making you do some subtraction in your head. I need to subtract 9 from both sides so that this plus 9 goes away. I have negative 3x equal to 63. And then I'm going to divide by negative 3 because that's the number in front of x. So you keep the sign of whatever number you're dividing by so that it goes away. You end up with x equal to negative 21. 
And then for number 10, what will we do first? Make a to positive, so we do plus 8. This is 5x equal to 55. Then we divide by 5 on both sides. The 5s cancel out. This is x equal to 11. Now again, all of these numbers that I'm getting x equal to are what I could plug in here to make that equation true. 5 times 11 is 55. 55 minus 8 is 47. So if your brain thinks in that direction, you can try guessing and checking different numbers. It's just that we're going to use complicated numbers eventually where it's not so easy to just pick and choose. The next row uh, we will do together. Number 11. What do I have to do first now that there are parentheses here? Distribute. Yeah, multiply everything by 2. So I'm going to do that first, just like we did in the top section. This will be 14 equal to 2. Oh, I should use a different color. The same color I used earlier. 14 equal to 6x plus 8. Once I do that distribution step, it looks just like that middle row, 8 through 10. It, is ha it does have the variable on the right-hand side instead of the left-hand side. Not a big deal. We can leave it there. I'm going to do minus 8 and minus 8 on both sides. 14 minus 8 is 6. And then what do I divide both sides by? 6. Or from that section, you might be able to see 6 equal to 6x means x has to be 1. Because 6 times 1 is 6. Now this one had more steps. Did we follow all of those steps? What's the name of the first step? The red one. Distribution. What's the name uh, or the names of the blue and purple one? Starts with an I. It's two words, actually. Second word is operations. Boom, perfect. Inverse operations. Very good. So we have distribution. Then we do a bunch of inverse operations. Let's do number 12 together. Didn't stick. Ooh, number 12 is kind of different. Why is number 12 different from things we've done so far? Ah, there's two X's in the very top. What did we do with like terms? We just added them. So we really can just take these two things and combine them together. Because they're both x's, so we're just allowed to do that. What's 3x plus 4x? 7x. Oh, snap. Now that I've done that, what do I have to multiply by 7 to make 14? I guess another way I could ask that. What do I divide both sides by? 7. seven. 14 divided by 7 is 2. Because 7 times 2 is 14. So a lot of times from that step with the number in front of x, we'll be able to just reason our way to the answer. If we move on to the next one, what should I do first? We should minus 3 on both sides because we want to get the x term by itself. And I know it's keeping a lot of us like the x's to be on the left side, but it's extra work to switch it. If you need to switch it, that's fine. Negative 6 minus 3 makes negative 9. It should get more negative if you're just subtracting things away from a negative number. And then I divide by, cool, negative 9 divided by 3 is negative 3. Oh, that's the last one. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to uh, come down here, and we're going to do some fractions. Now, I know everybody avoids fractions like they're the plague, but I need us to get comfortable with fractions in like a, a respect way. Don't be scared of them. You don't have to like them. We do have to respect them. They're actually much nicer than decimals, in my opinion, because they don't round numbers. It's a whole thing. I could get on a soapbox about it. But we treat them exactly like we treat regular numbers. The thing is, the last step will just be a little different. So don't panic yet. If we wanted to get this minus 6 to go away so that the x term is by itself, what do I do? Add 6. Okay, so that first step, nothing has changed. That's still the exact same. Negative 
this is 2 thirds x equal to 18. Now normally, what do we say we do to get that first number to go away? We divide. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. But you might immediately be like, ugh, we're dividing a division problem. We're dividing a fraction. Kind of gross to do in your head. So instead, when you're trying to divide a fraction, it has to do with the keep, change, flip thing you learned at some point in your life with fractions. You keep the 18. You change the divide sign to a multiply sign. And you flip the bottom fraction. That is a lot easier to, one, type in a calculator, or two, do in your head. So this is equal to x. Okay. 18 times 3. 8 times 3 is 24. 3 times 1 is 3 plus 2 is 54. So 18 times 3 is 54. 54 divided by 2 is 27. Now, honestly, you're probably thinking, Ms. Quigley, at this point, I would just take this number and put it in a calculator. Yeah, cool. Once we get the calculators out, that would be fine. We should not be all that afraid of fractions. They work exactly like regular numbers, especially when you have a calculator to help you out. Now, I'm saying all of that, and we're going over the fraction rules because um, we're going to be doing some SAT prep in this class, and part of the SAT and the TSI you take without a calculator. So there will be a little bit of non-calculator usage in this class just to prepare us for those sort of exams that are coming up. Is that okay? Okay. Um, so let's flip over to the back of this page. I want to leave those problems for you to try as an exit ticket later. And just so you can already know if you got it right, I'll put the answers up here. But we're going to go to the back page and just do a few of these that I find to be super important. But I'm going to jump around again because I want to make sure I get to the ones that I want to get to. So we're not going to start at the top. We're actually going to start here on number 25 where it says simplify the radicals. In this class, in geometry, because of the way that shapes works and the formulas for shapes that we're going to be using, there will be a lot of times that your answers need to be written in what's called simplest radical form. You will have done this in Algebra 1 and Algebra 2, but probably not a lot, so I'm going to reteach you as if you've never seen it before. To simplify a radical, you make a factor tree. So what are things that multiply to make 36? 9 and 4. Nine and four. Can those numbers be broken down? Yeah, what does 2 break down to? I mean, sorry, I just said the answer out loud. What does 4 break down to? 2 and 2. What does 9 break down to? 3 and 3. Now, when we're simplifying a radical, we circle the number of the index. Now, the index in a square root is 2. So really, for this class, we're circling pairs. Do you see how there is a pair of 2s and a pair of 3s? Those numbers get to pop out of my square root as one number. Was there anything left over at the ends of the branches on this tree that I would need to like underline? No. Everything has branches, so that we're looking only at ends of branches here, which means that th the square root of 36 is actually 2 times 3. I circled a 2. I circled a 3. They get to pop out. Well, 2 times 3 is 6. Square root of 36 is 6. It's actually a perfect square, so we really didn't have to make a tree for that one. But a lot of times there's going to be other numbers included. Dude, that was like 13 minutes. I set my timer twice. That's too long. Number 26, sorry. Let's do number 26 together, which is square root of 27. So again, we break the, uh, the number down into a tree. What does 27 break down to? 9 and 3. 9 and 3. OK. Can 3 be broken down at all? Mm -hmm. No, it's a prime number. Can 9 be broken down? Mm 
yeah, to three and three again. Now I want to circle pairs. So here's a pair of threes. And you see how there's that lonely three by itself? I'm gonna double underline it, which is what I like to do. You don't, you don't have to use that notation, but that's what I like. Anything that you circle comes out of the square root. Anything that you underline or don't circle stays underneath the square root, which means the square root of 27 is three popping out and then that single three staying in. So my pair comes out, my singleton stays in. And that's it. Pairs pop out, singletons stay in. Let's do one more together because this one's gonna be a smidgen different. Why is this one different? Because you've got this number in front. We're not gonna panic about this number in front. It gets to stay in front for forever. But we are going to break down the number 32. 32 ends in two, so I know it's divisible by two. That's an easy one to start with. It's actually two times 16. Can 16 break down? Yeah, to what? Four and four. And those fours both break down to two and two and two and two. Okay, I circle pairs. And I like circling my pairs from um, left to right. So here's a pair, here's a pair, there's a single. Pairs pop out, singles stay in. Okay, so when I go to put this number back together, I can't forget that purple two from the very beginning. That's already in front popped out. But I do have to multiply it by a two from the first pair, a two from the second pair, and leave the singleton two inside. Whoa, okay, all these numbers floating around and they're all twos. I get it, kind of confusing. The purple two came from the front. The first blue two came from this pair. The second blue two came from this pair. And then the red two is by itself. Now I'm not gonna leave my answer like that because honestly that looks like 222 square root of two to me. We're gonna multiply those numbers together. Two times two times two is eight. So this should be eight square root of two. So if there's stuff you popped out, multiple numbers you pop out, just multiply them together. Can we try some on our own? If you need some help, you got people at your table, try dividing the numbers by two at first. Most of them are even. So that's an easy one to start with. Okay, gave you some challenging problems here. Let's see how we did. I might be cutting off your thinking or you might have had to stop because you got stuck and that's okay. Uh, this is the first one. All right. So number sense wise, my brain says, oh, that ends in zero, which means it's definitely divisible by, divisible by five and 10. So if I go ahead and break it down by this, I'm gonna do 10 and five. You could have broken it down another way and that's okay. Now, something that might be helpful for you, the moment you break a number down, cross it off. Can you break down 10? Yes, into what? Five and two. So I'm going to cross it off and I'm going to put five and two. I'm telling you to cross it off as a, as a helpful hint if you're getting confused on what is end of the branches. Because now that I've broken this number down all the way, five cannot break down just to five and one. It's a prime number. I have a pair of fives. They're not next to each other, but it's still a pair. And I have a singleton of two. Okay. So the five, the pair pops out. The singleton stays in. This one should be five square root of two. How did we do on that one? Medium? I accept medium. All right, great. Let's break down 24. I'll leave that up there so if you're still writing it down, you can see it. I went kind of fast. So if I break 24 down, 24 is six times four. If you broke it down another way, that's fine. It is still two times 12. It is still eight times three. All of those ones are fine. But six can break down to the numbers two times three, and four can break down to the number two times two. Can any of those numbers at the ends of my branches break down anymore? No. If you broke yours down a different way, like maybe you did eight and three, your ends of your branches should still be two, three, two, and two, which means I have a pair of twos, 
and I have my single tens of two and three. So when I put this together, I've got my purple negative four from the start of the problem. Don't wanna forget about that one. I've got a pair of twos that popped out of the square root and I have both the singleton of two and the singleton of three. Now we don't wanna just put two, three in there because it's gonna look like 23. That's not what we mean. We mean two times three. So that's another something that we would simplify by multiplying. Negative four times two is negative eight and two times three is six. So simplified, negative four square root of 24 is negative eight square root of six. That one was a little different, so I tossed you a hard one. Are there any questions about that one? So anytime you have more than one number popping out or more than one number staying in, what do we do with them? Multiply, Multiply them, very good. Okay, last one in this section. How did you, somebody tell me how they chose to broke down 48, because there's a ton of options here. Two and 24. Two cannot break down, but 24 can. How'd you break that one down? Six and four. And then four can be two times two. And six can be two times three. This one is especially nice to start marking out the things that are not ends of branches, because look how many numbers are involved. That's a lot of numbers involved. I need to keep my paper organized. So we circle the pairs. We circle the pairs and we underline the singletons. Now when we start finishing this answer, we cannot forget about any of the numbers that originally started in front of the square root, which is that purple five. So we would have purple five times the first pair of twos times the second pair of twos and then left underneath it, that singleton square root of three. Five times two times two is 20. So this should be 20 square root of three. Questions about this section. Can I give you another random one just to practice one more time since I've explained it maybe again and you can try it again? Um, just find a, a space probably underneath this problem, number 828, because it wasn't all that long. I just want you guys to try doing the square root of um, 68. Just plain old square root of 68. Give it one more shot. So for this one, you'd break it down 2 times 34. 34 is 2 times 17. Did anybody find something that divided into 17? Yeah, 17 is another prime number. So there are prime numbers or numbers you can't break down. They're kind of big, and that's okay. Our pair is what number? And our singleton is what number? So when we put this together, what should it look like? Two radical or square root 17. Nice. We feel okay about that? Now, in this class... There will be a lot of times that your final answer will be some sort of square root. If you think back to eighth grade when you did Pythagorean theorem, does anyone remember that? A squared plus B squared equal to C squared. Yeah. Sometimes you had answers that were really long decimals. I'm assuming you got to put it in decimal form. I don't want that kind of answer usually. I'm going to be asking for what's called simplest radical form. So instead of giving me that long string of decimals, you might have to do this to almost all of your final answers if it doesn't come out to a cute number in your calculator. So this skill is like a finishing skill for all of our problems that we're going to be doing all year long. Unless I say like decimals are cool because sometimes I'll say decimals are fine. But this is going to be like the final step just to clean up your answers at the end of the problems. Man, that's been a lot of math, yeah? And I think you're tired of listening to me talk. So I want just two more problems to be done and then we're going to be done for the day. But we're going to go back to the front, those two that we skipped. Ooh, and I know that they're the fraction ones, but you got it. I'll give you like five-ish minutes because we leave at 08 from this class, 10.08. So we have 10 minutes till we leave. I want you to do two more problems. When you've done those two problems, you can pack it up and go. Sound good?